Hello and welcome to Will Watches. This is Little Miss Sunshine. So before going into this, I know next to nothing. I've seen there's like a camper van and I know Steve Carell, but I don't know any of the other casting. And I've seen there's like a camper van. So if this is just like a fun, wholesome coming of age road trip camper van movie, I am well down for this. If it's anything like Captain Fantastic, I'm sure I will love this. So before we jump into this, be sure to check out the Patreon. Over there you can find a full length timer based version where you can just watch along with me and sync up your own footage. You can also find polls so you can vote for what's next and you can find early access. So yeah, let's just jump right in. She was watching the Miss America pageant. There are two kinds of people in this world. Winners and losers. So she wants to be like Miss America. She sees it as a role model. With my nine step refuse to lose program. <laughs> okay. I want you to be winners. Thank you. <laughs> so it's just a small room of people, not not a big crowd. Kind of hypocritical, you know, this guru. <gasps> That's Paul Dano. <laughs> how old is he here? He looks like teenager age. Yeah, he's like giving this speech how to be a winner, and then he's only giving his speech in front of like 10 people. <laughs> 400 days of exercise in a row. Is that what that was? Is this just like all one family? We're getting introduced to them one by one. Okay, <laughs> this is dad or granddad. I don't know how long. I don't know. Richard, he has nowhere else to go. Tony Collette as well. Here's Steve Carell as well in the hospital for something. Your brother's fine. Oh, it's her brother, okay. You to keep them away from sharp objects, knives, scissors, if you have medications, depressants in your house, keep them secure. I'd prefer to keep them, but... Yeah, I know. The insurance. Yes, in America, they have to pay for the whole treatment, so the insurance can't keep him any longer. So, he is depressed, suicidal. You no, know, there's, like, the juxtaposition between the title Little Miss Sunshine and he's sitting there looking all depressed. Go ahead, you're still Was it, was he admitted like a attempted suicide or something? So is this all going to be, they go on a road trip and he finds his love of life again? He doesn't mind, Frank. We talked. So they're going to share a room? <laughs> no, I know, but we can't have you sleeping alone. The doctor said the door open. That's important. Yeah, so she's looking after him, but he might feel like he's overbearing. He's got all of these rules he has to follow. Hey, it's your sister! Fuck. They, <laughs> there's something about Little Miss Sunshine on the, um, on the phone message and he, like, hung it up or something. Okay, thank you. Bye. Paper plates. I don't, that's kind of a thing in America, right? They use paper plates instead of actual china, just because it's easier to throw away sometimes. I know, you know, not every American does that, but I've seen that's a lot more common than it is here in England. But you don't talk anymore? He just doesn't want to talk. <laughs> you can talk, you just choose not to. Just edgy teenager phase. That's definitely something he's going to have to, like, overcome. Throughout the movie, he's got to speak at some point, right? So who do you hang out with? Is he a bit of a loner? But he can't even answer the question, can he? What about your family? Hates those especially, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. It's hard to know what to say, you know? <laughs> He's going to join the Air Force Academy, become a test pilot, and he's taken a vow of silence until he reaches that goal. You're kidding. Is it possible just once Dad? we could get something to eat for dinner around here that's not the goddamn hey. fucking chicken? Hey, <laughs> Helping the daughter with the beauty pageant. 
So when did you start with a vow? Been nine months, Frank. Yeah. Nine months, wow, that's real commitment. May not be my dream, may not be yours, but he's pursuing it with great conviction. In fact, I was thinking about the nine steps. And oh, he's crying out loud. About the nine steps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's because he's his motivational speaker, right? He's always, he's always trying to be motivational, but he's always trying to sell it as well. What happened was he tried to kill himself. You did? <laughs> I'm shocked that that is that he's actually that she's actually telling her this. I fell in love with someone who didn't love me back. One of my grad students. I was very much in love with him. Him. <laughs> it was silly. It was very very silly. There's another word for it. Yeah. So the dad is is the dad really just sick? You know, against gay people, obviously. That's when you tried to. Well, no. Actually, all of that was okay. What happened was two. Yeah, it was just a downward spiral. <laughs> Foolish choices. I'm sorry, and he gave up on himself, which is something that winners never do. It's always just talking about being a winner. Is he always like this? Ollie, why don't you tell us how you were cheating? <laughs> Luck is the name losers give to their own failings. It's about wanting to win. Willing yourself to win. you got to want it better than anybody else. I do. Then you're going to be a winner. You can see how much he gets on everyone else's nerves. Now she has a place in the state contest in Redondo Beach. <laughs> <laughs> This Sunday? So is this where the road trip happens? Where does that leave us? We can do it. We can. What about Olive? Yeah, they're gonna have to take her. This is our seed money. Well, if I had a little help bringing I mean, it in, you know. Fuck. Yeah, look, he's so positive about her work, about his daughter working towards this, and then when she actually has an opportunity, he's against it i'm not driving how are you gonna fit grandpa on the miata i coached her i gave her the moves i gotta go Why don't you yeah yeah he has to go he's a coach all right i'll drive the bus richard i was told explicitly not to leave frank by himself so frank's gonna have to come along go then unless Dwayne and frank go with us <laughs> Dwayne's yeah obviously gonna be super against that okay he kind of has no other choice leave me Hello. Yeah, how old is he here? Can he be left in the house on his own? I will give you permission for flight school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna have to. This is great, just like how much um Paul Dano can show for his expressions. Have any fun. Yeah, we're all with you on that one. Yeah, he says that, but they definitely will eventually. Yes. We're going to California. Where do they live at the moment? Like, how much of a trip is it to California? I'm guessing it's quite a big trip if they're taking an RV and everything. <laughs> Here they are on the road. You know how tired I am? If some girl came up to me, begged me to fuck, I couldn't do it. <laughs> uh, watch the language, huh? She's listening to music. She's focused in and zoned in. You started snorting heroin? I'm old! Well, this stuff will kill you. What am I, an idiot? <laughs> when you get old, you're crazy not to do it. <laughs> I didn't like it at Sunset Manor. Frank. Are you kidding me? It was a fucking paradise. They got a pool, they got golf. Not is Sunset Manor like a rehab place or something? Ice cream is made from cream, which comes from cow's milk, and cream has a lot of fat in it. What is this, like a beauty pageant thing? It's like, don't, don't, don't have all of this cream. Cause you'll get fat. Olive Richard is an idiot. I like a woman with meat on her bones. <laughs> Why is everyone so upset? No, no one's upset, honey. I... Uh, she's joining this beauty pageant. She's already gonna have a lot of beauty pressure on her, right? Those women in Miss America, skinny or big fat. And now she's not gonna eat her ice cream when they come. Does anyone want my ice cream? Yeah, I like a little. Dwayne, Frank, dig in. That looks really good. Boy, I feel so Oh, they're gonna <laughs> try and guilt her in, into liking it. Yeah. You sure you don't want to have some, Olive? <laughs> Wait! Yeah. Stop! Don't eat it all! Yeah, he, need, he needs to teach her that it's okay in moderation, you know? Hey, did you get him? Uh, no, I can't get a signal out. It's always focused on his business. So is Richard gonna be on the phone the whole time worried about this business thing? He can't get any signal. He's gotta learn to, um, he's gotta learn to <laughs> enjoy the trip and not worry about his business. You got a problem. And the truck's broken down now, the van's broken down. Clutch is a lot of money. Maybe Thursday. 
<laughs> She's like training. <laughs> Alex? Dad? I want you in the car first. Okay, <laughs> they're going for shit to get out to speed. Come on! Come on! Woo! Cheryl, let's go! Right. Woo! Cheryl! Woo! I mean, this is what's like on the poster, right? They're all running after the bus. Come on, come on, get in! Get in, get in. <laughs> no one gets left behind! No one gets left behind! Outstanding, soldier! Outstanding! Yeah, see how much fun he's having? <laughs> Even Dwayne's smiling at the back there. And about... I don't know. Two minutes in, he stops me. He says, I can sell this. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And that's why he keeps trying to get on the phone to Stan. Oh, how about that? <laughs> yeah, and I, I can detect that, that note of sarcasm there, Frank. <laughs> sarcasm is losers trying to bring winners down to their level, and that's step four in the program. Wow, Richard, you really opened my eyes to what a loser I am. How much do I owe you for those pearls? Of oh, wish? that one's on the house, buddy. It is? Yeah. <laughs> Hello? Stan? You can't, you can't hear anything. <laughs> no, I know. We, we were uh, on the highway, and I lost you myself. Forget about it. How'd we do? Oh yeah, seeing the smile drop off his face. Frank? Oh my god, how are you? Is that the student? We're going to this private spa in Sedona for the week and then uh um... Larry's here? Yeah. See he was on a little bit of like an upwards track there, but now he's he's gonna spiral a little bit probably. Nineteen seventy nine, sir. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't want him to see all the mags he's buying, of course. Yeah, he's saying, like, this is the life he should be living or something. Okay, I, I can come by. I'm going to be coming through there. I could swing right by. We could... He's not getting it. Uh, they're all going to be in a foul mood now. Wait a minute. I thought you said this was a done deal. He said it was a done deal. I can't believe I'm hearing that. Did you even try yes, negotiating? Tried. Of course I tried. What do you think I... Yeah, all the stress of him. He, need, he needs this deal so he can provide for his family, right? Let's go. <laughs> they're not going to leave Olive, are they? She, she isn't in the van. Yeah, <laughs> they've just left her behind. <laughs> Where's Olive? Oh. <laughs> I got her! I got her! I took a big chance. I took guts, and I'm proud of it. Yeah, he needs the motivational speech now. <laughs> but it's not getting through to him. Yeah, a few moments of heart coming through. Richard, we, we have to talk. Let's just get through this and go home. Talk about it once they're home, yeah? And they're hearing everything from it. <laughs> He's actually enjoying it, okay. It's because you're beautiful, inside and out. What she needs to hear. Daddy hates losers. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, yeah, all the pressure on her. Now, you're trying, right? Yeah. Well, then you're not a loser. Yeah, as long as you're actually trying. I wonder if Richard gets his, like, motivational speech. Like, the reason he wants to do his motivational speech is he gets it from his dad, you know? His dad gives all of these great bits of advice, actually, when it really counts. What are you doing? I'm gonna fix this. He's gonna go to find Stan, but that means he'll have no sleep for the drive tomorrow. Or is he just gonna show up at this guy's house in the middle of the night? Ah, oh, he shouldn't keep the photo, because that's just a constant reminder, right? You can hear that he's ignoring him, maybe. It's like he's 20. <laughs> Oh, it's Brian Cranston. <laughs> it's not the program, Richard. It's you. Okay? No one's heard of you. Nobody... Yeah, that's the part, part of the thing of the motivational speaker thing, right? It's kind of a circle. It's like, look how successful I am. Let me sell you my success. And because he doesn't have any success, he can't sell it. Yeah, no, you blew it. You blew it, you're out. Yeah, can you go to someone else to sell it? Dad? Something happens to the granddad. Grandpa won't wake up. 
Is has he overdosed or has he died? Is this kind of the tragedy that will bring them all together? He's had a long, eventful life. And I know he loves both of you very much. But if God wants to take him, we have to be ready to accept that, okay? <laughs> Probably just fell asleep and never woke up. Wow, I wasn't expecting that so early. If it was, if it was so early, like when the mum was like giving her little speech there, I was expecting him to like walk in all jolly as he is and just be like, "What are you talking about?" or something like he's recovered. But then she lost him. Um, can I just? I know that this is uh, this might be a little unusual. Yeah, she she kind of needs the beauty pageant for him. Or is this gonna happen, right? No. You can't just abandon the body. Someone's, is someone going to have to stay behind to do all the paperwork? It feels like something's up here. It's not going to be the wrong person or something, is it? Damn it, Dan. God damn it. We'll go to Little Miss Sunshine next year, okay, honey? No. no. I didn't realise it was Richard's dad. I thought it was Frank's dad. Frank and Cheryl's dad. Richard, what are you doing? Are they gonna take the body with them? Winners don't give up. So what are we here? Are we winners? Are we losers? But is this just him like in denial, one of the stages of grief of it? You guys go, I'll make you watch the curtain. So they are actually doing this. At any second, the people coming for the body to take him down into the basement could come, couldn't they? He always brings it up when they're doing something. Do you think there's a heaven? Yeah, she's so young. She's got so many questions about it. I think there is one. Think I'll get in? Yes. <laughs> it was really cute. Okay, just leave it. Stuck or something. Ah. It won't stop beeping. <laughs> but everyone's gonna think they're beeping. Everybody just pretend to be normal, okay? <laughs> oh yeah, because they've got the body, of course. <laughs> what is this? The Breaking Bad reunion? We got Brian Cranston and Dean Norris. No, no, what? Don't. Don't what? He's just giving it all away. I, I, you, I, I, sir, I, put your hands on the vehicle now! I just now! <laughs> what was he thinking? Oh, is, does he think it's the porn mags? God bless you, God bless you. Don't worry, I'm not gonna bust you. <laughs> and this one is one of my favorites. <laughs> ah, good, yeah. From choice. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Frank's one. <laughs> happened? I'll tell you when I regain consciousness. <laughs> it's an egg. Can't you see it? Right there. He's colorblind. But pilots can't be... You can't be colorblind if you're a pilot. The TikTok thing, right? Is that where this is from? You can't fly jets if you're colorblind. You can't fly jets if you're colorblind. Is this going to be his first words? Now that his dream, what he was working for with this valve silence, now that that's gone. It's all right. I'm pulling over. I'm pulling over. Yeah, his dream's just completely breaking down, isn't it? God, this better be good. I'm pulling over. Is he going to speak? It's like on the tip of his tongue, isn't it? <laughs> there we go. Ah! What happened? He's colorblind. He can't fly. Yeah, let, let him be alone for a second. He's got to find a different passion. I hate you fucking people. I hate you. Divorce? Bankrupt? Suicide? You fucking losers. You losers. No, great. Paul Dennis acting. Maybe Frank can talk to him because Frank is kind of going for a similar thing where he's kind of lost his purpose, lost his job. I was worried about the time. Olive, you, uh... I 
in this moment when there is actual um, motivation that's needed, he's not going to give him a motivational talk. I think he'll get back on the bus because he doesn't want to ruin it, make this whole trip worthless. He'll come back for Olive. 255. All right, everybody look to the exit, okay? <laughs> there it is. Sunshine, there it is, Olive. We're going to make it. How the hell do you get Yeah, the road system's so complex. What are you doing? I can't slow down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what time is it, Frank? Uh, 259. Are they just going to have to jump out of a, mo of a moving car, yeah? Not turning back. Richard! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the door just <laughs> completely fallen off this time. And Frank's the one running in. Does she have uh, her dress and makeup already? Like. Hello? Hi, we'd like to register? Is it too late? I said, I have a hair check to do. Okay. I'm sorry that you're late, but I can't help you. You don't know what we've been through. I can put them in the system. Yeah, it's not that big a deal, mate. Like, it's such a big deal out of this. Out of small things like this. Please, it's only five minutes. I'm not working for these people next year. <laughs> Look, it's yeah. Miss Oh. That she'd seen on the TV. I like dancing. Dancing was too hard for me. I'm a singer. You need ice cream? I love ice cream. My favorite flavor is chocolate cherry Garcia. Yeah, that's exactly what she needed to hear. She eats ice cream. I heard. The packet has chickens. <laughs> yeah, look at all of this. You know, the beauty standards that get pushed on them. It's the last touch up, everybody. Final touch ups. Last touch -up. Yeah, she doesn't have enough time to get prepared or anything, right? And of course, the grandpa's not here to like go through a final rehearsal or anything. Let's <laughs> see more about Larry Sugarman. <laughs> The 24th annual Little Miss Sunshine Pageant! I hope, you know, if she doesn't win, Richard can still have like a speech for her, you know? Yeah, how does he feel about this? You see that she's nervous. He's kind of disgusted by all of this. Yeah, like child beauty pageants or something that I'm super against. But he's still proud of her. That gives her the confidence a bit. And that she's worried about being fat, she's like tucking in her belly. You got a, a kid in the show? He's just there watching or something. Yeah, you can see how uncomfortable he is. Skip all this crap, high school and everything. Just... Skip to as an adult. No, he needs to enjoy his time with his freedom. It's that all those years he suffered, those were the best years of his life. Because they made him who he was. They made him who he was. Think of the suffering you're gonna miss. <laughs> if I want to fly, I'll find a way to fly. Is there still a way he can find to fly? Glad you're talking again, Dwayne. You're not nearly as stupid as you look. <laughs> yeah, it seems like the type of thing he says he wants to be a pilot, but if he's a pilot for the army or something, that seems like something he'd be against. He's just completely lost, isn't he? Oh, I just I came to wish all of a good luck. How you doing, honey? But he said before about luck, you don't need luck. I don't want her to go on. Yeah, yeah. Mom, I don't want all of doing this. They both don't want her doing this. This place is fucked. Right. Look, I don't want these people judging all of fuck. Them. Yeah. Everyone is gonna laugh at her mom. They don't even know how good her routine is. She has worked so hard, she's poured everything into this. We can't just take it away from her. Let Olive be Olive. I mean, I get like, you want to let her follow her passions. I personally wouldn't let her out there just because against the idea of beauty pageants in general, which I think it might be the same for dad. But it seems Dwayne doesn't want her to embarrass herself. He doesn't think she will have a good performance. But she's been, she's been doing so much training with the grandpa. She might actually be good. They don't know. Crowning our winner. Please. Yeah, how nervous she is, yeah. I'd like to dedicate this to my grandpa. Is he here? Where's your grandpa right now? 
<laughs> she might have got some sympathy points if she had said like he had passed away, but she doesn't know that. She's a very girl. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> this is the song that they were doing. But Miss America was having fun. Yeah, e like even the people at the beauty pageant, they're disgusted. But is it just because they don't like it? Or, yeah, maybe it was best if they didn't let her perform this. I mean, like, she looks like she's having fun at least, but... Like, I, I can't... I can't tell if it's just because of, like, how sexualized the dance was. Which it seemed like at first, but then there's, like, some of the other pageant people, it seems they were just didn't like her moves. She wasn't, like, performing how they want her to, you know? Is he gonna? Is he gonna start dancing with her? He's nodding his head. <laughs> Just gonna share the embarrassment. Even Dwayne. I wasn't expecting Dwayne to do it. <laughs> but it seems like Miss America herself is actually enjoying it. And the police are here. I guess he did grab the host, didn't he? On the condition that you never enter your daughter in a beauty pageant in the state of California ever again. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be happening anyway. Olive, your grandpa would have been really proud of you. Yeah, you were great. You were beyond great. <laughs> I love the imagery of, you know, the yellow bus and him chasing after it. It's iconic, isn't it? Okay, so that was Little Miss Sunshine. Just really fun and wholesome. You know when you're just like in a mood where you want to watch like a specific type of movie? This was just like perfect. It just knocked it out of the park. It was exactly what I wanted out of it, you know? It was just so cute and wholesome. There were a few times where I didn't actually cry, but there were a few times where I was kind of like on the verge, I think. There were so many like really great wholesome moments and then it's all balanced by some of the sadder moments as well. I think the grandpa death that really took me off guard just because of how it was kind of placed in the movie. I don't know I was expecting it to be a fake out for some reason. When the mum was doing like the family meeting I was fully expecting that to be kind of abruptly stops and it, he would just like walk in and be like hi guys what are you talking about or something like that and then when Richard like lifted up the tarp to like see the body I was expecting it to be the wrong body or something I don't know that just really caught me off guard I was just like expecting something to be up there and th there wasn't he had just you know died in his sleep I don't know if he overdosed or they just kind of leave it out for interpretation right but that kind of caught me off guard but it, it's funny because that's almost like the first stage of grief, right? You're in denial. I was kind of in denial that he had actually died there. It took a bit through the movie for me to process like, okay, that was actually real, you know? And I think the grandpa's character is very obviously supposed to be offensive. You know, it's not a case of the movie itself is offensive. The point of his character is like, he's a little bit homophobic and he like sexualizes a lot of people. And that's kind of like his character flaws. He's supposed to be like this kind of dirty old man, that kind of trope, but that isn't to say the movie, the movie doesn't endorse that. It like actively goes against that, doesn't it? If your movie wants to like make a point about that, you need a character in there for it to make a point against, I guess, you know? And then there's also Frank who we're introduced to and he's just attempted suicide. He's in a hospital, right? He has to be taken care of by his sister. And one thing I noticed with Frank was he was always wearing a white shirt. And at first I was thinking like, why you typically wouldn't associate that with like depression. You'd associate like darker colors with that, right? But then I think it could also be white is kind of seen as pure and you could also see it as emptiness because when you're depressed sometimes you don't you just don't feel anything at all and he's just kind of empty sitting there maybe that's what the white represents but then we see throughout the movie he starts to enjoy his time there the first time they have to like push the van to get going he slowly starts to enjoy life more and more doesn't he that was just really great seeing that throughout the movie and i think sometimes 
for people that haven't gone through depression, that kind of trope can be a bit boring. They see these characters and they think, oh, just get over it, get over yourself, whatever. But then if it is something that you have gone through personally, it is much more effective, like in a movie, right? You, you can apply that to everything. You know, if you see a character you relate to somehow, you relate you relate to it better, yeah, you know? But I think Frank worked really well for me here. And he kind of mirrors Dwayne a bit as well. They're kind of paired together throughout the whole movie, aren't they? And this is where the you can't fly jets if you're colorblind thing comes from. Yeah, as I said, Frank and Dwayne, they kind of mirror each other. They both kind of lost their dream, I guess, because Dwayne wanted to be a pilot. And then, of course, Frank, he had this dream of being with this guy that he loved. And then the guy went for the more successful man and he just kind of spiraled from there. Right. So they, they both kind of mirrored each other in they both lost their dream what they were dreaming of and that could also be a motivation for them to support olive in her being in the pageant but of course we see they are against the pageant and like beauty pageants especially like child beauty pageants are something that i'm against because of how it pushes the beauty standard onto these kids and because the creepiness of it how they can be sexualized like here we see we see there's this guy and richard asks him oh which kid is yours and he's just like he dodges the question right and he is implied that he's just like a perv he's just there to watch these kids dancing or whatever and then when it comes to olive's dance it was kind of weird for me because none of them knew what her dance would be and she'd be learning these moves from her grandpa so of course the grandpa is like this dirty old man he's taught her these dance moves and then and when we see she's like doing the dance and the people are like disgusted at it, it just seems so hypocritical because that is like the entire point of these beauty pageants. And, and it was hard to tell, you know, were they disgusted in like her dance moves and how like sexualized some of them were? Or were they just disgusted that she was having fun up there and it wasn't like she wasn't taking it seriously, I guess? That's what it kind of seemed like a bit as well. And we see like the Miss America who she looked up to she was actually enjoying the dance it cut it cut to her a few times and she was like clapping along and enjoying it and that was a great moment when she said oh she loves ice cream what this this is my favorite flavor what's your favorite flavor and encourages Olive that it's okay to eat ice cream because that's something Richard had like planted the seed for earlier it's great that that kind of is undone and we see like she's at this age she is worried about her belly and worried about getting fat and she's what I don't know how old she actually is in this but she's so young you know I think part of that hit close to home because she reminds me a lot of my second cousin who is like nine now she even kind of looks a bit like her you know these are things you don't want to push onto children you don't want to push these beauty standards onto them you don't have want these children to be worried about these trivial things that don't really matter especially at this age she's already worried about her body image and she's like nine or ten here right and then Dwayne as well you know he's got this vow to not speak and we see when he lost what he was working towards with these flying the jets he had taken the vow because he wasn't going to speak until he had got like accepted onto the program right he wasn't going to speak until he became like a pilot and when that all came crumbling down he finally speaks but his like breakdown there that was really great Paul Dano's performance was great Paul Dano is a great actor and it's fun to see a movie where Paul Dano isn't beat up because you know there's a there's a meme where it's like this compilation of Paul Dano in, in like everything that he's in. He gets beat up some point at some point. But here he got out unscathed luckily. <laughs> and then Richard, he's like this motivational speaker, this guru. And I'm not like a huge fan of that. A lot of the times it feels like a bit of a scam. Like they can be scamming people out of money. And with Richard, it feels like that almost comes from insecurity. Like he's kind of insecure in himself. So it has to project this sense of successfulness. As I'd said during the discussion, you need to be successful to be able to sell yourself at, on these things, you know. You can't be a success guru if you're not successful because people will be like, well, why aren't you successful? Your method obviously doesn't work. And that's exactly 
exactly what um, Brian Cranston's character had said to him. It seemed like he didn't 100% believe every single thing he was saying. And I think you can kind of see that, like at the start he says, oh, you don't need luck, you just need to believe you can win. And then at the end he like wishes Olive good luck. And so you can kind of see the kind of character growth there and see like a bit of the hypocrisy, I guess, because it seemed like towards the end he was being a lot more sincere and that's when he says good luck. So he does realize that it is important to say good luck. And you could see like how he was really supportive of her when he was like trying to be motivational. But I don't think he like fully realized what he was doing. Like he was just being motivational to be motivational. He wasn't actually supportive of her doing this pageant. And we kind of see that, don't we? We see when he's watching the pageant, he's actually disgusted once he realizes like what's actually going on here. So like he was supportive, but he didn't really care. And I think there's a difference there. Just being supportive in general and being supportive and caring. And then, you know, him and Dwayne, they actually try and stop her from going on because they've seen she might get embarrassed or there's these pe creepy people in the audience it's all a bit iffy with like beauty pageants I'm not a fan at all this is just a really great coming of age slice of life all these people learning these life lessons I know some people can would watch this type of movie I think it's kind of mundane but I think it's almost as you grow up you become you get to appreciate this type of movie a bit more for what it is and appreciate the lesson that it teaches you know so I think that's everything I wanted to talk about thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this if you did leave a like or a comment comment of your thoughts and if you really loved it be sure to subscribe so you can keep up to date for all the future uploads so yeah thanks for watching bye